Good afternoon and welcome to the webinar. My name is Kurt Smith with Applied Payment Technology and I'll be serving as your host for today's webinar on an introduction to life cycle cost analysis for pavements, part one, fundamentals. This is part of an ongoing series of webinars on sustainability that were developed under FHWA's Sustainable Pavements Program and covers all stages of the pavement life cycle. Before we get started, I want to mention just a few housekeeping items. The webinar is scheduled for a total of one hour, which consists of a 45 minute formal presentation and a 15 minute question and answer session. The questions will be answered at the end of the formal presentation, but you may submit your questions at any time during the presentation using the questions box on your control panel. If you don't see the question box, you may need to click on the orange arrow icon on the control panel to display the various settings. At the end of the session, we will work to answer as many questions as we can within the time allotted. But because of the volume of questions that have been received on this series of webinars, plans are currently being made to organize one or more additional webinar events uh, to address all questions that have been raised. Details on those additional webinar events will be made available once those plans are finalized. After the conclusion of the webinar, a copy of the presentation will be shared with all participants via email, along with the link to the webinar recording once it's processed. You may need to regularly monitor your spam or junk folders as we're discovering that some of the webinar communication for the registrants occasionally gets redirected there. Throughout today's webinar, we'll be using a number of different acronyms referring to different materials, products, and processes. Uh, a short list of some of those acronyms is listed here. We'll work to introduce these as they are used during the webinar, but this master list will be available in the presentation materials that we'll share with everyone later. To get things started, I'd now like to introduce Monica Yarado with FHWA, who will preface our webinar with a quick look at FHWA's Sustainable Payments Program. Good afternoon and good morning to some of you. I would like to welcome you to our Sustainable Payment Systems, the webinar series. Today's webinar focuses on an introduction to life cycle cost analysis for pavements, part one, which focuses on the fundamentals. Our presenter for today will be Mr. Luis Milgosa, who I will introduce a little bit later in our presentation. But before we get started, I would like to give you a little bit of background on the Federal Highway Administration Sustainable Payments Program, which began in 2010 with the vision and mission to advance the knowledge and practice of designing acting, and maintaining more sustainable pavements through stakeholder engagement, education, and the development of guidance and tools. The Sustainable Payment Systems, a webinar series, is one of those tools, and this is the seventh of the series of 10 webinars. You will receive one professional development hour per webinar, and upon the completion of eight out of the 10 webinars, you will receive a course completion certificate. With our education and engagement through the Sustainable Payments Program, we created the FHWA Sustainability Ambassadors, which is a group of FHWA employees from different disciplines whose goal is to expand the knowledge and outreach within their field that complements the Sustainable Payments Program. And with that, I will introduce one of our Sustainability Ambassadors, Mr. Luis Melgosa, who joined the FHWA as a student intern in the California Division working under the Structures Program. In 2010, he joined the Professional Deve Developmental Program with the Maryland Division Office as an area engineer, where he performed a design and construction rotational assignment with Central Federal Lands Highway Division and a payment and materials assignment with the Maryland State Highway Agency. In 2012, he joined the New Mexico Division as a safety and payment engineer. And with that, I would like to pass it on to Mr. Luis Mogosa, who will be our presenter for today.
Um, um, thank you, Monica. So, 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 what can I learn from 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 this presentation? Some of the some of the key topics covered in this presentation include the following: What is life cycle cost analysis, and how can it how can it help highway agencies? Um, what are the key steps in a pavement life cycle cost analysis? What are some of the tools available to conduct a life cycle cost analysis for pavements? And where can I find more information on life cycle cost analysis? Um, so, can everyone see the next slide? It's still in the same slide. Okay. Fundamentals of, uh, so now I'll be talking about the fundamentals of what is life cycle cost analysis. So what is life cycle cost analysis? Life cycle cost analysis is an analytical tool to, to, to provide um, cost comparisons between competing design alternatives. It is assumed that each alternative provides the same benefit or performance by considering all of the costs, um, which include for agency, the initial construction cost, rehabilitation cost, or maintenance cost. And for, for users, it includes vehicle operating cost, user de delay cost, and crash cost that are incurred during the service life of an asset. This analytical process helps transportation officials to select the lowest cost option. So what are the benefits of conducting a life cycle cost analysis? So, so this slide um, highlights that in, in conducting a life cycle cost analysis, there is a unique opportunity to improve the sustainability of payment, of payment structures with the potential to deliver um, tremendous um, environmental, social, and economic benefits. The following are, are examples of how pavements can impact sustainability in that it could take into account the, the economic um, component, which is the construction, maintenance, and rehabilitation cost, vehicle operating cost, and crash cost. Additionally, it could account for the environmental component, which is energy consumption, uh, greenhouse gases emissions, noise, air quality, and stormwater treatment. And the final component is the social component, which deals with safety, fatalities, injuries, um, property damage, the smoothness, the vehicle operating cost, and green greenhouse um, emissions, access, mobility, and aesthetics. So, so one thing that I wanted to make that I want to make clear is that life cycle cost analysis is not the same as life cycle assessment. A lot of people think that uh, life cycle cost analysis is the same of, as life cycle assessment, but it's not. One clear distinction that we, need, that we need to make is that life cycle cost analysis focuses on the economic component, which will be covered in this presentation, and life cycle assessment focuses on the environment, environmental component, which will be covered in webinars nine and, and 10 of this webinar series. So uh, a, lot of, a lot of people confuse LCCA with LCA, but just to clarify, LCA is not the same as, LCCA is not the same as LCA. And for the purpose of this presentation, we are going to focus on life cycle cost analysis, which deals with the economic component.
So how can highway agencies, so how can life cycle cost analysis help highway agencies? Life cycle cost analysis can help highway agencies in, make, in making pavement design decisions by comparing materials for pavements, comparing maintenance, preservation, and rehabilitation strategies, comparing construction work zone effects, and comparing uh, alternate bids, either asphalt versus concrete, or rehabilitation versus reconstruction. Life cycle cost analysis helps identify opportunities to reduce agency and user costs through the pavement life cycle. Life cycle cost analysis helps inform and guide decision making for policy, planning, or design. And life cycle cost analysis is a transparent and widely accepted methodology that can help in identifying the best pavement design alternatives. The Code of Federal Federal Regulations Part 626 states that pavements shall be designed to accommodate current and predicted traffic needs in a safe, durable, and, and, and cost-effective manner. One approach to evaluate the cost-effectiveness is by performing a life cycle cost assessment on the pavement design alternatives. So the key steps in performing, in performing a life cycle cost assessment process are discussed in the next couple of slides. Life cycle cost analysis is a structure approach to evaluate different pavement alternatives. The process can be broken down into the following steps. So before the life cycle cost an analysis, um, we have uh, step zero, where we get organized. Um, that's where a policy is put into place on how life cycle cost analysis will be done. It establishes a life cycle cost analysis framework and when to apply it and establishes a project scope. So for example, in New Mexico, New Mexico's um, life cycle cost analysis policy considers the following. It considers all reconstruction or new construction federally funded projects that are on the national highway system. And, and these projects shall have an alternative pavement design with a life cycle cost analysis for construction equal to greater than two lane miles in length unless it's um, waived by, by the general office. In addition, for warm, warm or hot mix asphalt cement payments, the payment structure shall be designed um, based on the 20 year on, on easels. And for Portland cement concrete payments, the payment structure shall be designed based on a 20 year easels um, as well. The life cycle cost analysis determination will be done um, using the Federal Highway Administration's real cost per software um, version 2.5 or, or, uh, or current or current version. The life cycle cost analysis will be, will be performed for a, for a period of uh, 45 years with um, including that would include the the salvage cost and, and user cost. A deterministic analysis will be utilized and, and the real discount rate will be determined by a 30 year, 30 year uh, maturity from the Office of Management and Budget on the circular A94. So, 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 now that I, so now that we have gotten our, ourselves um, organized, Let's take a look at the, the next um, steps. So the next step, um, it would be the, in the alternative um, preparation. Um, that's where we do step one, which is establish um, the alternatives. And step two, determine the activity timing. And step three, 
um, estimate the cost, and step four, compute the life cycle cost. From there, we would determine the, pref the, deter the preferred alternative by performing step five and, uh, and analyzing the, the results. So in the next couple of slides, we'll go into, into detail into these five steps. So step zero, establishing the lifecycle customer analysis framework. In establishing the framework, we need to select a analysis period. And in, in establishing the analysis period, one needs, needs to assure that the same analysis period is used for all alternatives being considered. The analysis period has to be long enough to include at least one major rehabilitation activity. And you shouldn't um, confuse the, the, the design life with the analysis period. The, the design life is, is, is the time used by the payment engineer to, to, to design uh, a, a pavement while the analysis period is the time used by the life cycle cost analysis framework. So from here, we're going to determine um, how inflation will be addressed. We're going to establish a discount rate and establish a economic analysis um, indicator. Either it be in the net present value, which is the net discounted mon monetary present value, of future cash flows using the e equal analysis period. So, so this is very um, important. In order, in, in order to perform the net present value, you, you need to have the same analysis period for all alternatives being, being considered. The other analysis, analysis indicator is the equivalent uniform annual cost which expresses the, the life cycle cost as an analyzed estimate of cash flow instead of a lump sum estimate of the present value. So now let's talk about the discount rate. The discount rate represents the, the time value of money. It is approximately the, the simple difference between the nominal interest rate and the inflation rate, but more accurately, is computed with the equation shown on the slide. So as you could see, the discount rate um, equals the real interest rate, which equals the nominal interest rate minus the inflation rate, divided by one plus the in inflation rate. Our rates in this equation are expressed in a decimal form. For example, a 5% nominal interest rate and a 3% inflation yields 0 0.05 minus 0 0.03 divided by 1.03, which equals 0 0.0194, or 1.94% 1 um, discount rate. Treasury bills are often used as for the interest rate whereas consumer price index is often used as the indicator for inflation. The selected discount rate can have a significant impact on the life cycle cost analysis. For example, higher rates provide greater reduction in the present value of future costs. Zero rates give equal value to the present and future costs, and, neg and negative rates increase present value of future costs above the current cost. So now let's, let, let's talk about the, the discount rate selection. In selecting a, a discount rate, select a real inflation adjusted discount rate that properly reflects appropriate interest and inflation rates over the time frame being considered in the analysis. The Federal Highway Administration recommends the use of the long-term real interest rates from the OMB Circular A94, Appendix C, which are based on, on Treasury bill yields and forecast inflation. 
as you could see from the OMB circular A9, A94, the 30 year interest rate is 0.6 or 6%. We will provide a, a link to the OMB circular in 94 in, in, in the chat box. So for step zero, we need to determine the, and determining the project slope, the agency needs to consider the following, the roadway geometry, the traffic data, the agency and user cost data, pavement treatment service life data, design alternatives, under consideration, um, for example, flexit versus rigid or reconstruction versus rehabilitation. So now let's talk about some life cycle cost analysis inputs. Some of the life cycle cost analysis inputs are as follows. The analysis period, the roadway geometry, the timing, performance, and cost of each activity, and the discount rate. Um, traffic data, um, for example, AADT, percent traffic growth or percent trucks, construction works on inputs, and user cost inputs. So now I'll be going over some sample project label data for a life cycle cost assessment. To start with, well, we have the specific roadway geometry, which is the number of lanes in each direction the lane width, and the words on lanes. For traffic data, as previously mentioned, we have the AADT, the annual traffic growth, the percent trucks, the hourly traffic distributions, lane capacities, and queue dissipation capacities. For user cost data, we have vehicle operating cost, added vehicle operating cost and time, and value of user time delay. Additionally, we have um, agency cost, on um, service life, and, and work zone inputs, like the activity duration and the hours of operation. So step one, and establishing design alternatives. So the first step, in the life cycle cost analysis process is to establish the design alternatives to, to be compared. You need to identify a range of poss possible alternatives, either asphalt versus concrete or rehabilitation versus reconstruction. You need to consider at least two alternatives that satisfy the performance objective being sought. These alternatives need to have the same analysis period this is um, very key. The same analysis period needs to be used for, for the alternatives being considered. The second, the second step in the life cycle cost analysis process is to determine the schedule of initial and future activities over the established analysis period. And clearly defining the schedule of in, initial and future activities for example, maintenance or rehabilitation activities, you need to establish the year of occurrence or the, or the performance life. In determining the year of occurrence or the performance life, it is essential to consider data from your pavement management system or PMS for the, for, for the activity timings and the, and the treatment service lives. Using local data for the performance life of maintenance or rehabilitation activities will help you have a more accurate life cycle cost assessment. Having a robust pavement management system with historical data on how long or the performance life will help you in accurately determining the year of occurrence for the different maintenance and rehabilitation activities. The need for accurate estimates of activity timing implies the need for, for good payment performance data 
and pavement deterioration models that are calibrated to local conditions. Having good pavement data and cal calibrated deterioration models for the local conditions will provide more accurate um, results. So step three, estimating cost. Once activity timings have been established, step three involves estimating the agency and works work zone user cost. As you could see in the graphic, the x-axis is the estimated agency timing and the y-axis is the estimated activity cost. For T initial, you have initial user cost in a solid arrow and initial agency cost in the dash arrow. For the first rehabilitation, at T equals one, you have user cost in solid arrow and agency cost in dash arrow. This continues for subsequent rehabilitations until the analysis period has been satisfied. At the end of the analysis, um, you have TRSL, which is the remaining service life, which is also calculated for bo both agency and user costs. So now let's talk about some work zone use, user costs. There are a number of user costs that can be considered in a life cycle cost assessment. For the purpose of, of life cycle cost assessments, only vehicle operating costs and user delay costs are typically considered. Crash costs are generally not considered in a life cycle cost assessment. It is generally accepted that user costs should be evaluated and considered separately from agency costs because estimates of user costs vary widely depending on the cost estimating scheme selection and the specific project being considered. Management of agency budget is an important aspect of agency function and user costs do not directly debit agency budgets. Computed user costs on some projects using certain cost estimating approaches can swamp the decision making process and lead to the selection of impractical or unaffordable options. The Federal Highway Administration recommends that user costs be computed and analyzed separately from the direct agency costs. Another alternative would be to include all costs in the same life cycle cost assessment, but weigh the user costs differently, typically less than the agency cost. So step four, computing the life cycle cost. After the activities and their timings are defined, the next step is to combine all of the costs to equivalent dollars in order to make a valid comparison. This is accomplished by converting all costs into present worth values through a process known as discounting that uses a discount rate in a math math mathematical computation. Discount rate was discussed earlier in this presentation. The top figure shows the, the, the timing and magnitude of all anticipated cost and salvage or remaining service life value for a particular construction or rehabilitation option. So as you can see um, in the slide, we have the initial cost, the re rehabilitation cost, and the maintenance cost. The bottom figure shows the equivalent cash flow consisting of a single net present value or cost at time equals zero, which is now in current dollars. As you could see, by using the net present value, one can bring future costs of rehabilitation and maintenance and maintenance costs into the into a present cost.
This process is repeated for all considered design, construction, or rehabilitation options. And results for each option can be compared against all others. This ap approach assumes that all considered alternatives have similar benefits or performance characteristics and identical analysis periods. Alternatives with different analysis periods cannot be compared using the net present value. We will discuss this issue in the, in the next couple of slides. So what if different, different design lives between alternatives? The first option, if design lives differ between alternatives, is to increase the analysis period to the longest design life alternative by adding additional rehab or reconstruction to the shorter design alternative, or include the remaining remaining value at the end of the analysis period. This removes economic bias from the alternatives. Another approach of handling design life differences is to do the following. Determine the present value of each option, and then the, determine the value of, of each payment in a series of uniform payments that has the same present value as computed in the previous step, and then convert that to equivalent uniform annual cost by using a capital recovery factor that corresponds to the selected um, discount rate and the length of the analysis period. And then in, in, the, in the last step, um, you compare the equivalent uniform annual cost between the considered alternatives. Note that for any given strategy, the equivalent uniform annual cost implies that the strategy will be performed again at the end of the current analysis period. This approach may favor short-term fixes. As you could see in the, in the graphic, once you convert all costs to the net present value, you are able to convert convert those to the equivalent uniform annual cost and compare the alternatives. So step five, analyzing the results. The final step in the life cycle cost analysis process is to analyze the results and develop recommendations. Compare alternatives using a common metric such as net present value or equivalent uniform annual cost. In the analysis, you should consider how do agency and user costs compare, what trade-offs should, should be considered, and can work some strategies be, ch be changed to reduce the cost. In addition, um, to determine the most influential par parameter affecting the outcomes, so what's driving the results by either doing a sensitivity analysis or performing a prob probabilistic life cycle cost assessment, um, which uses um, statistics, um, including the mean and standard deviation. And this process uh, is recommended by the Federal Highway Administration. So now that we have reviewed the five steps in performing a life cycle cost assessment, let's talk about some um, caveats. The life cycle cost assessment results are largely dependent on the quality of the inputs used in the analysis, including the activity timing and activity cost. The need for accurate estimates of activity timing implies the need for good payment performance and deterioration models that are calibrated to local conditions. Other factors also come into play, including the selection of a discount rate for the analysis, the selection of a analysis period, the treatment of residual value, either remaining service life value or salvage value, 
the allocation of service value if used, the calculation and consideration of user cost if used, and more. Some of these issues are addressed in the next section of this presentation, and all are discussed in the reference cited in the sustain Sustainable Payments Reference Guide. In addition, a few decisions are based solely on, on economic considerations. Risk of the selected alternative, available budget, and many environmental and social factors generally play a role in identifying the preferred alternative. As is noted in, in, in the Federal Highway Administration's Life Cycle Cost Analysis Primer, Life Cycle Cost Analysis provides a critical information to the overall decision-making process, but not the final answer. So now I would like to go over some of the tools available to conduct a life cycle cost analysis. Basic life cycle cost analysis calculations are simple and can be done by hand or, or using a spreadsheet. Many agencies and consultants have developed their own software that reflect locally agreed upon inputs and policies to ensure uniform application, incorporating local unit, unit cost, discount rate, and maintenance cycle. Other standard information and, and little flexibility to help ensure uniform application by staff or consultants. The Federal Highway Administration's Real Cost Program is available for life cycle cost analysis computations, including the probabilistic analysis. The Federal Highway Administration's real, real cost software is a widely accepted and adopted pavement life cycle cost analysis tool in the US. The program is Microsoft Excel based, but has a front end menu to help users in applying the tool. It is available free of charge from the Federal Highway Administration's webpage. If you click on the link, you can download a copy of the program and user manual. The real cost software is currently being updated. One of the updates is to make the real cost software more compatible with newer versions of, of Microsoft um, software. And, and an additional update is to aid in the life cycle cost analysis. So now let's, let's talk about some of the capabilities of the real cost software. The Federal Highway Administration's real cost software can do life cycle cost analysis using both deterministic and probabilistic approaches. It computes life cycle costs for agency and work zone user costs for new construction, maintenance, and rehabilitation projects. It requires input of agency cost and service life or timing for individual activities. The real, the real cost software is a comprehensive economic analysis tool to aid in the decision-making process. The Federal Highway Administration encourages everyone um, to use this tool. So where can I find more information on, on the life cycle cost analysis? Available resources and tools include the Federal Highway Administration's um, life cycle cost analysis technical bulletin, the Federal Highway Administration's um, real cost software, and the Federal Highway Administration's life cycle cost analysis primer, fact sheet, and web page. You can get access to this by clicking on the link on the presentation. So now let's go over some of the closing remarks on the, on the life cycle cost, cost assessment fundamentals. In summary, the main takeaways from this presentation are that economic impact is an important component of payment 
sustainability and can be and can be determined by using established life cycle cost analysis processes. However, note that life cycle cost analysis, like any other computational process, can be manipulated to provide support for specific decisions. That practice should be discouraged in favor of true investigative or assessment techniques. Note that any agency input values, even standard inputs, should be evaluated, evaluated frequently and updated as necessary to reflect the latest information on interest rates, observed service lives, and performance periods. Changes in cost with changes in policies, specifications, and equipment. In closing, the Federal Highway Administration's real cost software is a pavement life cycle cost analysis tool available to the public free of charge that can do deterministic and probabilistic analysis. So now I would like to hand it over to Monica Jurado to close out this uh, presentation. Thank you, Luis. Thanks for a great presentation. So along with our webinar series, we also have other uh, products that are provided through the Sustainable Payments Program. We have our Torch Sustainable Payment System, which is where all our presentations for the webinars come from. We also have a payment lifecycle assessment framework, along with other tech briefs focusing on payment sustainability, lifecycle assessment, resiliency, and other strategies to improving sustainability, both in asphalt and concrete. We also have our Sustainable Payments Program Roadmap and our website where all of these products are housed. And please join us, next slide. Please join us for our next webinar, which will fo focus on life cycle cost analysis part two, which is the applications, which focuses on the key considerations in payment life cycle assessment, sorry, life cycle cost analysis, example life cycle cost analysis applications and sustainability related applications, which will be May 21st. And with that, if you have any questions, please feel free to contact uh, Heather Dilla or myself, Monica Jurado. I've, we've also provided a link for our Sustainable Payments website. And with that, I'll open it up for questions. Thank you. Yes, this is Kurt Smith again, and we appreciate um, our speakers uh, walking through the topic here today. Um, again, this topic was on fundamentals of life cycle cost analysis. And in the next uh, part two of this webinar um, subset, we'll be looking at um, some of the applications and stuff. So some of the questions we've gotten so far um, do kind of get into the applications. So we'll try to get to some of those questions as time allows, but I think what we're gonna try to focus on is just general, um, some of the fundamentals associated with life cycle cost analysis. So um, in addition to Luis and Monica joining us here today on the panel, we also have Heather Dilla with FHWA, and uh, we'll be working with those three to start sorting through um, some of the different questions that we've received so far. Uh, one of the first ones we had was more or less just a comment um, where we were talking about how we can use life cycle cost analysis, and it was talking about comparing different materials and different pavement types. And the comment was that we can also use life cycle cost analysis to compare different features and payment design features, for example. And, and that is a legitimate use of the, uh, uh, of the uh, technology as well. So for example, you could do a comparison, uh, for example, on a concrete pavement that maybe was constructed with a stabilized base and maybe a concrete pavement that was uh, constructed with a granular base and try to look at the relative life cycle cost uh, of those types of uh, design features. Um, but let's move on to uh, one of our uh, first questions. Uh, one of the questions, and I'll direct this to um, Heather, was what's the best approach in computing the net present value? Should we be using the real costs or the nominal costs? 
unmute myself. Can you hear me? Yes. All right, so in the 1998 Tech Bulletin, it, it outlines a discussion on the specific guidance for this particular topic. But out of the out of the bulletin, it does say it's a good practice when conducting LCCA to use the constant dollars, which means you use the real discount rates. So we recommend um, the real discount rates, and therefore you don't need to consider the inflation; it's already accounted for. So that right. is it. Yeah, and, and tied in with that, of course, is, is just to make sure that everyone is, that you are consistent. Some some agencies or some people may want to use maybe the, you know, the real or the uh, the nominal. The main thing is just to make sure you're always consistent throughout the process. Um, let's move on to uh, next question I'll uh, address to Luis. Um, Luis, the question kind of open-ended, but what should be the analysis period for doing a life cycle cost analysis for a surface layer and a base layer? So kind of an open-ended question, but uh, maybe you can provide a little bit of uh, guidance on that. Um, the, so the uh, analysis period, I think um, that, that depends on the design life of each of, uh, of those. Um, so as, as long as you're able to cover the, the design life or, or how long the, the treatment's gonna last, um, just make sure the analysis period is longer the, than the design life. Um, a, a specific number, um, it could vary from state to state. So I would say as long as you're, you're covering the design life and, and one additional treatment, um, you should be um, that should um, cover it. Right, and and there's not necessarily going to be a fixed fixed number for that because it can vary again depending on agency, um, type of pavement, type of roadway, type of facility, just a number of different things that that can that can come into play. Um, the next question um, I'll direct to Monica, and Monica, this is in reference. Um, to the document that was that was uh, provided in the chat box, and there was just a question about confirming um, that the 0.6% um, interest for the 30-year real in real interest rate was indeed 0.6% and not 6%. Yes, so it is, um, I think in slide 19, Luis mentioned that these numbers were in decimals, so it is 0.6%. And just like the comment says, I guess on the document, it does show the actual, and you gotta remember, uh, as noted in slide 19, um, these numbers come from 2017. So yes, the, the new 2019 updated number is 0.4%. Right, and if I'm not mistaken, I believe those get published, it's near the end of the year, like November, December, I believe. So the, the 2019 one just recently came out. Um, I'll direct the next one to uh, to uh, Heather. Uh, Heather, the question is whether FHWA uh, recommends taking into account different inflation rates for different types of materials, um, or what the FHWA is approach for dealing with with that kind of a situation. We do not recommend that. As I mentioned, we recommended using the the real discount rate. So um, if you chose to, to use the um, the nominal discount rate, then we would suggest that you would use a general inflation and not material specific. Part of the reason is you're not bound to the certain maintenance and rehab treatments in the future, and and if prices change, you you know in the future certainly you could change some of your decisions, um, and so we stick to the recommendation of constant dollars and real discount rates. Siva, would you like to add anything else to that? I know Siva's on the line. Uh, uh, yes, I think uh, yeah, that's exactly why when we. Uh, the material specific inflation rate, uh, you know, the based on the material volatility and then uh, applying the nominal discount rate. But again, you know, when you 
are doing an LCCA for initial construction and planning some future rehab. But if for some reason a particular material has, uh, you know, the price has uh, inflated significantly, um, then those are cases where you will be doing a, another LCCA for that rehab option and you may be considering a different rehab than what you assume. Again, these are based on the best information that you have at the time you are making the decision, knowing that there is going to be uncertainties associated with it and uh, uh, you know we'll be acting on them if and when they materialize. So as Heather said, uh, the recommendation is to use uh, constant dollar real discount rate because it's just using the nominal uh, discount rate and in Inflating it just basically extra work. It deals the same thing as long as you are using the general inflation. Thank you. Ken. All right. Thank you, Siva. Okay. Um, let's uh, go back and direct the next question to Luis. And Luis, actually, this kind of builds on the, the one that you answered just previously uh, with regard to analysis period. This question is just. Um, how, how do we adjust or select an analysis period in order to make sure we're doing a, a meaningful comparison between uh, concrete pavements and asphalt pavements, given that they have different performance lives and different performance periods? Um, yeah, so in, in selecting the analysis period, um, one thing that you need to make um, make sure of is that you're at least um, your analysis period is, is long enough um, that it covers at least one um, ma uh, maintenance or rehabilitation activity for each of the um, um, alternatives. Um, so you just got to make sure that um, for if you're comparing asphalt versus concrete that your analysis period is long enough. And that way, you're doing one um, rehab or, or one rehab, rehab activity either on the asphalt and on the um, concrete. So it, it just has to be um, long enough. All right, thank you. Uh, and Luis, as long as you've got the floor right now, I've got a follow up um, question about how, how does one compute? some of the user costs um, what models or what what information is needed and, and what is done to compute the user costs that you mentioned in the presentation um yeah so for the for the user cost um you, you could use um like your if, if you if your state has local values for um for if you if there's a crash on, on on the on the project or on the work zone, you could get that um, monetary value from from your state um, office, or I believe mean, you could also use some the um, federal numbers that are um, published uh, in terms of the cost of a crash, um, the cost of of delay, and for for delay um, for for this, um, you could also set your own. Um, uh, own values or or, or use um, so any some um, standard values that are um, calculated or provided uh, at the federal level um, I, I believe uh, Silva might, might know a little bit more on how the tool uh, addresses this so I'm not sure if Silva wants to add um, anything anything else yeah thank you uh, yeah so uh, in the real cost and uh, basically uh, we are considering the uh, delay cost and vehicle operating cost. The delay cost is uh, either due to radio speed uh, as well as if there is any queuing. Uh, if there's a queuing, then that's going to be overwhelmed uh, the delay cost compared to the radio speed uh, delay. Uh, then the, the third part is vehicle operating costs here. Yeah, you know, once the queuing first, you are going to stop and go or start. And so there is an additional uh, vehicle operating cost. But again, uh, you know, if you have queuing, then that's, uh, you know, the delay, the value of time per uh, either a passenger car or commercial vehicles are available uh, at the national level. 
the technical bulletin list uh, some of the values and we are to find them they are updated uh, periodically uh, also some of the states have their own value for for example california has their own value i believe and uh, um, so so the, uh, the the way that the calculation is done is uh, you know how much uh, delay is due to uh, radio speed as well as if there's a queuing then the capacity to volume uh, calculation is uh, used to determine how much the the queuing delay and once you have a delay for each vehicle you multiply to get the uh, total delay cost over the work zone period and uh, one other I, I think uh, you know it was mentioned in that one is that you know we calculate user cost we recommend calculating user cost uh, because if you don't calculate it particularly in an urban area you don't even have uh, an idea of the, what the magnitude of it maybe the you know if you see the magnitude you may think about uh, you know maybe changing the closer strategies but we don't recommend adding user cost to agency costs uh, you know you know that will overwhelm and also those are different uh, you know pots of money per se uh, but they, you know, they provide valuable information in terms of how much the impact uh, uh, of the delay is going to be, and uh, whether the work zone, uh, you know, hours or the logistic needs to be changed. Uh, so, but not, but not, and it could be used as a, one of the additional factors in determining the most cost-effective uh, uh, strategy, but never to add them together. Thank you. Okay, and, and Siva, while, while you have the floor, um, we thought maybe you could follow up with this, this question, uh, whether the software or I guess life cycle cost analysis procedures in general, do they have the, the capacity to evaluate uh, noise aspects of pavements or other factors such as air quality, smoothness, fuel consumption, and so forth? Uh, no, no. Uh, basically, when you are one of the assumption in life cycle cost analysis is that the old natives that you are considering are providing similar level of service or, or limit of a similar function over the life cycle, and then you are only comparing cost. The minute, uh, so again, it is not uh, identical, but over the life cycle that you expect them to be performing similarly with respect to user comfort, uh, level of service, noise, if, if, if noise and environmental consideration are part, you know, uh, the air quality is part of it, then that will be also included. But if, uh, if, if you want to use uh, that, so this is only specified on cost, there are two ways to address uh, if you are comparing, uh, you know, there are noise and um, uh, air quality issues, then you are going into life cycle assessment where you are considering the environmental aspect of uh, the alternatives. That is kind of basically a sister approach to the looking at the cost. That's okay. That yes, that was yeah. perfect. Thank you, Stephen. Actually, there were several questions, um, several uh, somewhat related to that topic, so uh, it, it was good to be able to to talk about that and address that. Um, we're just about wrapping up uh, our time slot here. I've just got one quick question I want to throw to Heather because I know this is something that often comes up. Uh, Heather, just a question about what the current status is with uh, any updates to FHWA's 1998 tech bulletin on life cycle cost analysis? Yes, thanks. So as many of you are all aware of, we had um, peer, held peer exchanges and listening sessions over the past year on our payment design policy and technical guidance, which relates to that 1998 tech bulletin and a few other documents. We have posted the results from those events on our pavement notebook on the website. So if you Googled FHWA pavement notebook, it's under chapter one of the pavement notebook and in information, all the summaries are listed there. Um, and so you can see the, the summary of the national workshop as well as the individual peer exchanges with the states in the listening session. Um, 
and we appreciated everybody's input into those reports. We are now in the point of putting together an implementation plan and strategies to how we're going to proceed in the future. And so we're planning to possibly reach out to all the participants again to give an update and communicate back, you know, what we've heard, what are the things we need to work on, what are some of the ongoing efforts that um, that is undergoing in FHWA on some of these efforts and what are our current plans in moving forward. So um, be on the lookout for that. I would assume we would start that effort in the next two months or so. Um, we're just in the processes process now of summarizing everything and putting that plan forward. Excellent. Thank you, Heather. And, and I know there's always a lot of interest in, in that. And uh, so appreciate you filling us in on that. All right. Yeah. I think we, uh, we're going to have to cut things off right there. So want to thank everyone for your time and attention and, and hope you found the webinar informative. Um, we welcome your attendance at the next webinar presentation, which as noted earlier is scheduled for March 21st. And we'll be presenting part two of this topic on life cycle cost analysis. So thanks again and so long everyone.